Hi, I'm, I'm Neil Shearer, and the reason I'm here is because we thought the CBT was the charity for us, but but back in May this year, they they they're forcing the they're asking the co-workers to become to sign a document to become employees, and otherwise, if they don't sign it, they will be evicted, and we don't want that. We want to live with the co-workers and their and their families, and that's the reason why we're here for this vigil yeah. tonight. My name is Alan Hobson. I live in Bottom Village with Neil, with Cinda, and a lot of other people. And um, and the other thing is I don't like the, the changes at Bottom, where things are going, including all our, our friends that we've known over the years. Because I've been in Bottom about 24 years now. About 24 years now I have. And, uh, I think it's very sad that we have to try and stop the changes because the CVT does not belong in Bottom Village. But next year, come next year, we will be we will be celebrating the 60th year of Bottom Village, and we want to be stable and we want to be independent. Bottom Village is our home. Bottom Village is our life, and Bottom Village is where we live. CVT does not live in Bottom Village. I'm Jeffrey Spatman. I've lived in Bottom since I was 22. I'm now 65 and I also want to get rid of the CVT. Well, they've come to Bottom and they started changing certain rules that we can't live with our house parents and they have to move into different houses. Some of them have been told that they have to work with a wage and they don't want to. Um, they threatened them to leave. They'll have to leave if they don't do it. And the sooner we get rid of the CVT, the better. The workers are in, a, in the creamery making cheese and I'm also a cleaner. But I've just recently become um, uh, a carer, a respite carer and it, when I first came here we did everything for ourselves and now they come and tell us what, what, what's what got to be done and if we don't do it they, they threaten the co-workers and they have to leave. Some of them have already left Bottom. Yes I'm Michael Hazelton, the Vicar of Danby and uh, Bottom of course is part of the parish of Danby. So quite a few of the residents come to the church on a Sunday and also I do a little bit of voluntary work at Botton once a week and I've always I've come to know Botton as a very special and unique place. Uh, I've never known anywhere quite like it. It's hard to define but the atmosphere is created I think by the special ethos of Botton which is one of voluntary contribution by the co-workers and everyone has a role to play everyone has something to contribute they aren't sort of passive people on one side and active on the other givers and receivers everyone has something to do everyone has something to contribute and uh, there's a sort of a feeling there of, of I think a peace of, um, of, of, of happiness really and I find it uh, quite a moving place and it, it does much more for me going there than I can ever do for Botton. Hello, my name is Lucinda Richardson. I uh, I work in a, on a I work in hall or three days a week and I work in the bakery two days a week and I work in a weavery all afternoon. I just wish someone would pick the phone up and get the CVT out of Boston and tell them to leave us alone. I've had enough of it. We must eradicate from our souls all fear and terror of what comes towards us out of the future. 
We must acquire serenity in all feelings and sensations about the future. We must look forward with absolute equanimity to everything that may come. And we must think only that whatever comes is given to us by a world directive full of wisdom. It is part of what we must learn in this age, namely to live out of pure trust, without any security in existence, trust in the ever-present help of the spiritual world. Truly nothing else will do if our courage is not to fail us. Jackie, Jackie Rees Johannesson, and uh, we have uh, one of our children, our daughter is a villager at Botton uh, village, Danby. Um, she's a, a young lady, fairly independent, um, but uh, very vulnerable in certain areas. And um, we are a Yorkshire based family, so it's quite local to us, which is very nice. So somebody suggested Botton, which I knew very well, and we went, and she had a, a, a week of trial, and uh, absolutely loved it. Um, and she got offered a place, but there was a good, healthy nine months waiting list, waiting time, which we did, which was Lucy's gap year. And uh, she started, and when she came, she actually was, um, had been treated for clinical anxiety from college as a result of uh, one term, less than one term with supported living, which didn't work out. Care agencies or social services or whatever were run by um, paid staff that, that came in and out and, and one of the weaknesses with that was the lack of continuity and this is something we've had a problem with because whenever anybody new comes along, the message wrong and uh, problems arise. Whereas in the Camp Hill communities that still had shared living like the Croft, uh, etc. Botton, um, you had this, uh, you know, this family atmosphere when people really knew you well, uh, respected you, lived with you. What we liked about Botton and the shared living was the fact that it's a community of adults, some of whom have learning disabilities, and that I think just hits it on the, you know, next, that everyone is equal here. Um, and the whole ethos of, of everybody doing as best they can and everybody else helping each other. And, and that was great for our daughter because she's, she's a hard worker and she's quite capable and uh, she needs uh, she loves con contact with people, she's very sociable, but she loves a lot of contact, so this family atmosphere, you know, was much better than sitting alone in a, in a bed sit somewhere. People like our daughter will probably never really get the opportunity to have their own family. And okay, this is one of the hardest things, hardest for many of us, and this is the nearest that she will ever get to living in a normally family environment, and we think that's very special and very precious. The fact that she can live with elderly people, with children, with teenagers, with no... We think that is so special. And uh, take away the co-workers. We're told that they can't live with, uh, if they're employed with their um, shared living uh, model. And you get carers coming in and suddenly these young people lose family life and shared living and all the richness that goes with it. My name is Isabel, it's Fania Dunamica Bennett Heyman. Um, co-workers, what they do in camp here, they make to go after the residents and to work with them to work with the residents and to do like workshops and they do like workshops like the I would say the farm, the pottery, the bakery and the, and the rivery. The co-workers live in Camp Hill but the support workers they go home in the evenings. And the co-worker children when I was there it was really nice and you have fun and games and puzzles and you can read them the story you can read them the story or send them lullabies and give them toys and play and and they can play outside most of the time well i mean it looks to me a bit like a hostile takeover um the the last three years have been a nightmare 
there's just been hype after hype after hype. The first uh, social service review obviously was needed. Um, I, you know, I think most of us accept and, uh, and acknowledge that there were sort of, you know, that, that there, were, there was paperwork that wasn't being done and they had to be compliant. But the letters that we got was just so um, over the top. I mean, it was sort of serious and wow and scary. And uh, the language that we've got consistently has been um, complex and scary. Um, we got through the review. I think most of us felt, gosh, that was. Then great. it seems like the sort of one thing after another has come up to try and undermine the work of the of the co-worker structure and the shared living and uh, you know we keep getting sort of excuses or different slants and and finally you know the the, the latest one was was an issue on 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 a tax issue uh, which came out of the blue uh, we have seen documented evidence that the co-worker voluntary model is acceptable and shared living with it whereas we've been told that there are lots of risks and they've had advice and all sorts of um, other expressions but no evidence that this is to the contrary and that they have got to change the co-worker model and shared living. They, they, they intimidated me when I was on the TV, when I was BBC of the week, when I was sat outside the Danbury Vicarage. Um, and it made me very nervous when I was trying to speak. And when I was in Danbury Hall the other week as well, when there were a lot of people there like there were today, um, they also tried to do it there, and that's what's not really put me off. I don't believe a word they say. I mean, I can see no evidence for what they're saying. Uh, I find that the way they've managed things utterly uh, atrocious in, in any charity, let alone a charity that has an ethos, you know, of trust and uh, you know, general consensus and dealing with vulnerable young adults. Uh, I, you know, I see aggression, I see... Uh, uh, um, you know, sort of freedom of street, uh, speech uh, restricted, both both uh, amongst co-workers and villagers. I'm going to get a lawyer to protect me from what I've been saying, um, because the reason being is, be, uh, is that we are not allowed by the CVT to um, um, talk to the to the villagers in Bottom and the and the, the people that come to work here. I mean, sorry, come to work in Bottom Village is that they are not allowed to even speak to us, which is not fair. I mean, Bottom Village has been going a long time. Uh, it's nearly 60 years now. It's Bottom Village, and it's an old, quite an old village. But the thing is, Bottom Village is a good home. I think there's been an awful lot of misrepresentation in the in the the various forums we've had, both villagers, villagers, families together, uh, families alone. Um, an overwhelming response has been that everybody likes co well, a huge majority like the co-workers and shared living, and this never comes out in the results. And 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 and. To say that in any block of apartments or any uh, high street in the town or village uh, community, there are children and uh, different adults living next door to each other. I mean, this is part of life. I think it's uh, depriving um, my daughter and others of, of, a, of a facet of life that is quite normal by taking away children, for example. Um, as, I've, as far as I understand from the Mental Capacity Act, uh, decisions that are difficult to make alone should be done within a best interest meeting and uh, your decision on how you live is probably the biggest decision in your life and uh, and this has not been tackled with best interest meetings we weren't informed of these changes before they were basically decided upon uh, they made their decisions they're going to start uh, carrying them out and they've said they will support villagers individually after the fact and by the way if anybody wants a best interest meeting we can do that too that was in the last uh, Botton manager's operational plan. I don't think it's good enough. It sounds very inadequate to me and I have an issue with it.